Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including leaked Cybertruck production photos, Tesla's new head of Giga Texas, new software features coming soon and more, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, a new Tesla neighborhood has launched in Las Vegas. It's a Tesla neighborhood because every home features Tesla Powerwalls and solar. This is happening more and more for new developments that integrate Tesla Power products into their developments. A few months ago, we saw the first of these Tesla solar neighborhoods in Austin, Texas. Now there is a new one called The Arches. Quote, The Arches is a unique Lenner community featuring included solar panels, the Tesla Powerwall, and two universal EV chargers at each home site. All combined, these features make The Arches a net zero solar community. Sunova is the one installing the Tesla products, and photos of the project were shared. We're seeing this more and more, and it's showing how Tesla's products go far beyond their vehicles. For these homes, the Powerwall is a fully integrated AC battery system that acts as a partial home backup. Excess solar power is stored in the Powerwall during the day to use at night, during peak rate times, or during a power outage, depending on how the homeowner has the configuration set. Next up today, we have some new details about Tesla's upcoming holiday update from not a Tesla app. Apple Music is confirmed again, along with a new mini music player. Since these are from the release notes, they show a visualization of what this will look like, but it's not a screenshot yet. Their description of the music player says, quote, the mini player can be dragged around the screen. We're being told it can be placed on the left side, center, or right side of the screen. It's expected that it could look a lot like the music player available in the Model S and X UI. Other features include Zoom, MyQ integration, new video games, and light show sync, but we've already heard about those. Features that we haven't known about are auto turn signals. Quote, turn signals can now automatically be deactivated when changing lanes or merging. This feature is carrying over from the new Model S and Model X, which are capable of turning off turn signals after the vehicle changes lanes. This is a great feature on the Model S and X, and I've wondered if Tesla would bring this to the Model 3 and Y. Now it looks like they are. Tesla Vision will detect when you've completed your lane change or merge and deactivate the signal for you. Next, Tesla appears to be adding support for Rainbow Road with improved FSD visuals. They may be letting you use the visualization without the cowbell song easter egg, which is nice to see for those that really want Rainbow Road. For fan speed, Tesla is finally allowing you to change the fan speed while remaining in auto mode, and it appears that they may be removing 1 through 10 and making it low, medium, and high. We'll have to see how this works in practice as it could be a useful or annoying change to seasoned owners. Phone call transfers will require confirmation, and then there are improvements to the navigation UI. Quote, enhancements are coming to the navigation UI as well. Tesla is redesigning the the navigation module that displays your next turn and displays your ETA. Tesla is essentially splitting the UI into two pieces. The first will remain at the top of the screen and will include critical information about your route, such as your next turn. The rest of the information will be moved into a new module and appear at the bottom of the screen. This will include your travel time, destination details, as well as options to alter or cancel your navigation. Interestingly, a lot of this seems to be coming from the Model S and X UI and improving on it for the smaller single screen of the Model 3 and Y. Always great to see big updates like this, and if it's anything like last year, we should see this arrive just a few days before Christmas. Next up today, for the first time ever, a Cybertruck body in production has been spotted at Giga Texas. So far with Cybertruck production, we've seen a number of things. We've seen multiple new prototypes, likely built in Fremont by hand. We've seen the large 9,000 ton Giga presses, made by Idra, shipped from that company, and we've seen covered Cybertruck bodies arrive at Giga Texas. It's pretty difficult to hide the shape of the Cybertruck's body, since since it's unlike any vehicle ever made. This isn't just a box or any Tesla car, this is obviously a covered up Cybertruck body. In any case, for the first time ever at Giga Texas, a photo of a Cybertruck body leaked. This comes via Kim Java, and it's notable because it appears to be the first time we're seeing the single piece rear mega cast for the Cybertruck. This is expected to be the largest cast ever done on a vehicle, and this image confirms it. Sandy Monroe took a look at this image and was pretty blown away by what he saw. He said it's even more revolutionary than he expected it to be, if what he's seeing is what he thinks it is. This image appears to feature two different pieces as well, the large rear mega cast and part of the 300 series stainless steel this will be made of. One other thing people have noticed so far with this image is that there doesn't appear to be a folding midgate. This is disappointing to some because a patent application in late 2021 seemed to show the rear seats of the Cybertruck possibly folding. They were going to have a 60-40 split in the rear with both front and rear seats able to fold. That could have been great, but it's also something we haven't seen in any prototype thus 
thus far. This body appears to show that the casting includes fixed parts there, which would mean no folding midgate for cargo pass-through into the cabin. Another thing we can see from this image is a sign above it for powder coat. It appears that parts of this body could be coated or in the process. What's unclear so far is whether these have been produced at Giga Texas with delivered and assembled Giga presses, or whether these are the Cybertruck bodies we saw delivered and covered up back in October. From its original announcement, Tesla said, quote, Cybertruck is built with an exterior shell made for ultimate durability and passenger protection. Starting with a nearly impenetrable exoskeleton, every component is designed for superior strength and endurance. From ultra hard 300 series cold rolled stainless steel structural skin to Tesla armor glass. With this image, it's unclear exactly what level this exoskeleton is or how many parts this rear consists of. In any case, as of right now, the Cybertruck has reached about 1.5 million pre-orders and production for customer vehicles is supposedly set for mid 2023. There's a lot that needs to happen before that, but every small bit of info like this shows that Tesla still plans to make this vehicle. If you want to check it out up close, the original prototype is on display right now at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, and I have a full video all about that linked below. Next up today, there's a good chance your stock portfolio has taken a dip this year. As such, you might be looking for another way to make your money work for you, but even with 88% of financial advisors looking to allocate towards alternative assets, some of the usual alternative commodities aren't doing so well. Crypto exchanges are having a tough time, the real estate market is uncertain, and the usual go-to alternative, gold, has been caught up in the effects of federal rate hikes and inflation. That's when it's time to look into another interesting commodity that's gaining steam. Amongst institutions and millionaires, young and old, it's fine art. Part of the late Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen's art collection sold for $1.5 billion in the midst of rate hikes and market lows in November. With Masterworks, you can invest in SEC qualified museum grade contemporary art for a fraction of the cost. Legendary names like Picasso, Basquiat, and Banksy. In eight of their last nine exits, Masterworks has delivered net returns of over 13.9% to their investors. The average retail investor's portfolio is down 44% this year, and experts from Morgan Stanley are predicting another double-digit drop early next year. But there's still time to diversify. Masterworks paintings have sold out in minutes as people rush to diversify, so check out the link in the description below to get priority access. Next up today, regarding the factory where the Cybertruck will be built, Giga Texas, a new update appears to be clarifying a rumor from last week. Last week I reported on a rumor from a news source specifically known to not be credible. They actually recently lost a lawsuit to Tesla over false reporting about their Gigafactory Shanghai, and now was reporting that Tesla is promoting their China president to global CEO. This would replace Elon Musk as he's focused on other things, according to this rumor. Well, it appears this may have been built on a seed of truth, and it makes a lot more sense. Tesla has had success in China, with Gigafactory Shanghai becoming their most productive factory in record time. This is in large part thanks to Tom Zhu, their president in China. And now Bloomberg is reporting that Tesla is having him come to the US to run Gigafactory Texas. Quote, Zhu, who joined Tesla in 2014 and is heading Tesla's Asia Pacific operations, is in Austin this week. He has brought some of his engineering team from China with him to assist in overseeing the ramp up of Giga Texas. Giga Texas is going to be Tesla's biggest factory in the US and will be making the Model Y with 4680 cells in mass along with the Cybertruck, but it has had a slower than expected ramp. It looks like Tesla is trying to change that with Zoo. Right now, quote, it is not clear whether Zoo will retain his Asia responsibilities or for how long he will be in Austin. This should be very interesting to watch develop and I hope it goes well. If done right, this could be something that helps ensure we see the Cybertruck enter production on time. Next up today, after two years of paused deliveries on the Model S and X, Tesla has finally begun delivering those cars once again in Europe. As often is the case with first deliveries from Tesla, they kicked off deliveries with their top of the line Plaid variant this past weekend. Last week, first Model S's and X's had arrived in Belgium, and now they have made their way to customers. Over the coming weeks, we should be seeing many Model S's and X's being delivered, as several car transporters were spotted filled with these cars across Europe. On top of that as well, a Tesla ship tracker found many of these cars loaded up coming from the US. This ship includes long range and plaid variants of both vehicles and Tesla will likely see those delivered by the end of the year in order for them to count towards Q4 delivery numbers. This is a big development since Tesla is making first deliveries of the refreshed versions of these cars. Right now, the only factory that makes these cars is Fremont, so they are made in the US and exported, which likely led to some of these delays. Tesla's priority is the Model 3 and Y, but the Model S and X continue to be very popular in their segment, especially with the plaid models beating all cars on the road. Next up today, EV prices continue pushing higher, and the issue of affordability is once again coming into question. According to new data from Kelly Blue Book, EV prices were up by 2% in November.
November compared to October, and up 9% from November of 2021. These prices could have some help in the US with new incentives coming into place in January, but right now they have increased due to demand, chip supply, supply chain issues, and the cost of lithium. One of the biggest factors though is that, quote, it's unclear when this price spike will begin to cool down, but for the time being, with consumers still very willing to pay elevated prices, automakers have very few incentives to work to decrease prices. EV supply is small with many options out there, but only Tesla shipping EVs in large quantities. A big factor here relates to battery supply, and something may be finally helping here in the US. The Biden administration officially announced this week that it closed a $2.5 billion loan for Ultium cells in a joint venture between GM and LG Energy Solutions. This will finance the construction of new lithium ion battery factories in Ohio, Tennessee, and Michigan. Quote, Ultium will use the loan to manufacture large format pouch type cells that it says will deliver more range for less money. This should be a big deal for GM's future EV plans, bringing battery cell production into the US on a large scale. We'll see how long this development takes. Next up today, some updates about Tesla's EV startup competition. Lucid Motors is in the toughest part of their growth, ramping up production on their first vehicle, and new reports are saying that they're doing everything they can to prevent customers from canceling their reservations. Lucid produced 3,867 cars this year so far, and reservations have been declining. They saw reservations of 37,000 in Q2 dip to 34,000 in Q3. As a result, in two recent emails obtained by Business Insider, Lucid is taking this very seriously, saying that every cancellation is a failure. Lucid has also laid out a process for saving those failures. Now, if a customer asks to cancel their order, it's assigned to a case owner who has to call the customer within 24 hours to attempt to save the order. If they don't reach them, they have to call three more times on consecutive days. Then the case is passed on to a manager with even more follow-up calls, sent to a regional manager for calls, and then they can cancel the reservation. Quote, that means that anyone who decides they no longer want a Lucid vehicle and doesn't pick up their phone could be called every day for two weeks by a procession of Lucid employees before their request is confirmed. Some employees are also facing vacation blackout periods during holiday periods. On top of these tactics, customers are reporting that Lucid is offering certain discounts. Customers who ordered a grand touring after the price increases are being offered up to a 10% discount to complete their order. In response to this report, Elon Musk said, quote, they are not long for this world. It's definitely unfortunate to see, and hopefully these tactics aren't the only thing required to keep Lucid orders from canceling. They're in a tough market and having trouble scaling, but I'm rooting for them. Regarding Lucid and Rivian, the two main EV startups shipping cars, Elon Musk has said, unless something changes significantly with Rivian and Lucid, they will both go bankrupt. They are tracking towards bankruptcy. I hope they can do something, but unless they cut their costs dramatically, they are in deep trouble and will end up in the car cemetery like every other US automaker with the exception of Tesla and Ford. Of course, this is part of growing an EV startup and cost cutting is part of the plan, but now Rivian has made an interesting move. Rivian and Mercedes have paused their plans to produce electric commercial vans in Europe. This comes just three months after they officially announced this partnership. The head of Mercedes vans, Matthias Geisen, said that the collaboration with Rivian was based on a common passion for engineering and quote, that's why I respect and understand the decision of Rivian to prioritize the delivery of their consumer business and existing commercial business in the near term. Rivian's CEO said of the decision that, at this point in time, we believe focusing on our consumer business as well as our existing commercial business represent the most attractive near-term opportunities to maximize value for Rivian. For some, this makes a lot of sense. Consumer products and focused ramping of the products they are making is what could ensure that they survive and don't go bankrupt. But others like Dan Ives have said, quote, this is a complete head scratcher that Rivian scraps the deal three months after a major announcement. Never seen anything like this, but then again, it's a twilight zone in 2022, so nothing is off the table. I think this could represent Rivian quickly shifting strategy and realizing that this deal with Mercedes may have been a bit more than they have capacity for at the moment, but we'll see how this develops in the future. Last up today, some more updates about other automakers. Two companies have begun introducing their concepts for fake electric manual transmissions. The manual transmission is almost gone, accounting for less than 2% of auto sales today, and there is no shifting in EVs, so no shifting in the future. Lexus and Toyota appear to want to ensure that doesn't completely die out, so they are showing off their EV manual transmission concept in this test video. This is a special version of the Lexus UX300e, which they've been showing to European journalists, and Lexus says that they're developing it to make more engaging EVs in the future. Here's what it sounds like. 
At the same time, Hyundai appears to be working on a similar technology called NE Shift. Both cars utilize fake sounds to imitate gear changes, but Hyundai says, quote, by the time we launch Ionic 5N, drivers will be able to choose from several different character sounds or even create and name your own sounds. I expect you'll also be able to download new sounds over the air, which we create, but stuff like this will involve ongoing development. This will be very interesting to see develop, and it's hard to imagine this kind of system pleasing enthusiasts who appreciate this sort of thing. As MKBHD said, I think we'll look back in 50 years at the brief transition period where EVs tried everything to imitate gas cars as truly hilarious. Over at Honda, they just announced that they have secured enough battery capacity to put 1 million EVs on the road. CATL announced that Honda would purchase 123 gigawatt hours of batteries to power EVs in China. Honda is set to receive around 56 gigawatt hours of that deal before 2027. They also plan to sell 800,000 EVs in China in 2030, and this deal will help them get there, but it does feel as though Honda may be a bit late here. This also doesn't mention anything about their battery plans in the US. For now, they'll likely be part of that Ultium deal I mentioned earlier, as they plan to launch the Prologue based on the Ultium platform in the US in the coming years. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see all the issues I've had with my Rivian R1T after 2,000 miles, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.